the inspiration for this came from this photograph I took with my SX70 Polaroid camera. And then I manipulated the image with a popsicle stick that I found. And then I blew it up into this larger format. So we're gonna start with this idea. Again, we're working on hot press paper. I'm going to start by wetting both sides of the paper. Whenever you wet both sides of the paper, it gives you the opportunity to stay wet longer. And while this is super wet, I'm going to grab one of my crayons here, and I'm gonna start the drawing. And you'll see immediately the fun began. Look at the way that color is just moving around. Oh, I love it. So I'm basically going to use the color of the crayon to depict what it is I have in mind. In this case, the various red flowers. And there's another one down here. And then as I move along and complete the red flowers, I'm going to also come in and using a green pencil, I'm going to come in and design some of these leaf shapes that you can see here. And I'm trying to think variety. Oh, how much variety can I get? So you can see I keep changing the color as I go into some of these new, new shapes that I'm trying to depict. Now, if you notice your paper is drying or the colors aren't bleeding enough, have your fine mister handy and with your hand always moving. Don't just point and shoot and create a big blob of water. You always have to have your hand moving. Now I've got everything pretty much drawn in. And what I'm going to do is take some of my watercolor. In this case, I'm going to use some of my Quin Coral. I'm going to add some of these lovely colors into the flowers themselves. But I still want to save some of the whites. Those whites are really critical so that you get that nice sparkle into your piece. And then I'm going to just kind of spatter some of this color around. We like to get as much, we want to make it look as spontaneous as we can. We'll add a little more color here. Now one of the things we often forget is, sure, we go ahead and paint red flowers and green leaves, but I also want you to put some of this red color into your background. That's what makes the painting look good. And that's how your eye connects through the painting. So if I take and put some of that color even into the leaves, into some of the background here, connect it to the edge of the paper, Again, some of these cute little shapes in here. Connecting, connecting, connecting. And now I'm gonna think about some color harmony. That was my Quin Coral. The next color I'm going to add is going to be some Alizarin Crimson. It's a lovely color. Make sure you get the permanent Alizarin because there's some question about the permanence. Okay, now I'm thinking about maybe putting in some nice yellow greens. I've got my Windsor yellow, some Antwerp blue, and I really love this yellow green color here. So I think I'll just go ahead and maybe suggest this in some of the leaves. Maybe a little splattering here and there. couple of stems. And now the really exciting part is that pattern of mid-tone dark I was talking about. So I'm actually going to take some of my quinacridone coral and because I want it to be kind of a grayed down blue, I'm going to put some Antwerp blue in with it. And Antwerp actually has a yellow in it. So you can see how my color is not real purple. It's kind of a very dark purple. And what I want to do now is I want to think about, okay, how can I create some interesting patterns of dark linking through, through the flower itself, connecting 
to the top of the page. So now I'm going to try to pop out some of those leaves by negatively painting around them. I keep adding more color to this. So every time I add color to this mixture, it changes quite a bit. And what I want to do is I want your eye to start in this corner with the dark. And anytime I want, I can lose those edges just by coming in with water and softening them. So I want to move your eye from this corner, maybe move it across to this side, and go off over here. So I almost always pick a direction when I'm doing this. Here to the top, over to here. And if you connect even in only three areas, it really adds so much strength to your painting, to your design. So think about how can I anchor this to the edges of the paper? Now for my last death defying act before this dries, I'm going to come in and do a little color sanding into some of these areas. And I'm just expecting to uh, to have some very nice soft transitions. Ooh, I love it. And notice how I hold the sandpaper. It's actually like a little funnel. I can make this, I can direct these almost exactly where I want them. I could add some yellows. Oops. <laughs> Add a little harmonic yellow into this. Now remember when you do this and come back later, those colors are going to reactivate. So what I try to do is not overdo it. So we're just going to let this dry now, then I'll come back later and punch in some more darks. Everything is dry now. So this is a stage where I can come in and do a little bit of punching in a few little darks. So using the same mixture, I'm going to come in with my Antwerp Blue and my quinacridone coral and a little round brush, not too big. And one of the things I want to do is I just want to add a few darks that are going to pop things out. Very important. Just to have a few darks. Now if there's ever a time when you're going to overdo it and lose a lot of that spontaneity, it's when you get to this stage where you're, you try to put in too much with hard edges and don't think about the fact that maybe the painting is closer to done than you think. So in the focal area here, I'm going to come in and definitely add just a few more darks to add that final feeling of being finished. Then, for example, in an area like this, I probably will just come in, wet my brush, shake it out, come in at a right angle like this and just lose that edge. So you have a crisp edge there and a soft edge there. Let's do that again. A crisp edge here, wet my brush, shake it out, come in at right angles and lose it here. So you can see I, it doesn't take much to finish, just a few little dark shapes here and there. I may want to come in and do a little bit more with maybe a few final details in some of the greens here. But usually usually less is more, and it, it is so hard to stop. So I usually do quite a bit of evaluating where I stop and look and say, hey, I'm done. And so just to show you, and I probably will do just a little bit more to this, but just to give you an idea how versatile these watercolor crayons are, now I can come in, this happens to be white, but I could have chosen a soft pink, something that would interpret as light. And look at, I can just come in and do some more dark shapes here. I could even maybe give a few more little shapes like drawing. I could add another leaf that I probably will never paint. So I'm just trying to keep it looking spontaneous give it an air of looking finished. I do like things to look finished. And I think at this point we can pretty much wrap it up.